Hicks law goes along the lines to simplify something like this. Brandon attacks me, right? He punches me. What is the quickest response to an attack? One response for one attack. Because what happens, Hicks law says that if he gives multiple attacks, then I have to offer multiple responses, and in those responses, I increase my response time. Okay? I increase my response time. Now here's the deal. Most people are not gonna do this. You ever seen a fight like that? Most fights will always start this way. <laughs> I have yet to see somebody go. Oh, I come full you come full Not gonna happen. Alright? People respond to a very quick stimulus, you know how? By flinch. Right? You walk up to somebody, come here, stand up. Right? You walk up to somebody and you surprise them. The first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna flinch. That's the, yeah. no, that's that's the first okay. thing yeah, they're going to do. They are going to flinch. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you the bridge. It's called the spear technique. A lot of times, if you're not the aggressor, the first two seconds of the fight belong to him. You know why? Because he has the element of surprise. He does. Whether you like that or not, whether you believe that or not, that's the truth. You watch a fight, somebody's going to have the element of surprise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you a bridge that's based on a flinch response. Brandon attack. Here's my bridge. It's based on flinch, right? Always. Based on flinch. I'm not planning. I got to do midsection block, got to do upper block. I'm not doing any of that. The bridge occurs by bringing your hands up, coiling your center, and attacking to create some distance. That's one way, okay? So how does this apply? It's called a spear technique. You come in, what I'm doing is I'm blocking this hand, preventing the shoulder from any further movement, and attacking his neck, or attacking his shoulder. So he attacks, he attacks, and I keep creating distance. Now, whether you're a boxer, grappler, taekwondo player, aikido player, it doesn't matter, you know why? because this will lead into all of that, right? Boxer, right? I just punched him, bam, and I struck him, bam, okay? You get your player. Put him in an arm bar, take him down to the ground, right? Aikido player. Somebody here? <coughs> Why? Fresh point. I'm just going to tap him. I'm just going to tap him. Can you imagine if you hit him this way? With your forearm? Or the little bone of your wrist? Right in here. It's called stomach knock. It's the cheating way to knock somebody out. So the first thing I want you to do for just a couple of minutes is off various attacks just to make sure that you're working into this here. Keep your elbows low. Don't do this. Don't do this. Please. It's not what we're doing. Let's say Molina. Sensei Rangel, both stipulated the importance of what? Elbows in. Elbows in. Look at the power. Elbows in. 
I want you to try that for just about two minutes. So we'll come back and we're going to add to it. Find another bit, please. This will work against just about anything. You know, gun disarms are a little bit different. But in the spear technique, right, this is what I want you to do next. We're going to step in, punches, here, grab. Watch my right foot. I'm going to take my elbow. I'm going to bring it to his face right here. And I'm going to step forward with my right foot and slam him down. You can end that like this. All right, he punches, bam, bam. Hit him with the elbow, bam. End it with a period. You know why I did that that way too? Why I crossed over? After I hit him, I knocked him down. Just walk, just walk. I can end it with a period this way. Depending on what angle you're at. Your discretion. Now remember, the key to an arm bar is that, go down. You don't do an arm bar from up here. You don't. You don't throw yourself back. You're going to hurt yourself. Take up the slack. It's just like an Aikido. I'm going to sit on his shoulder right here. Look. Right here. Look at my foot. My, uh, my knee's against his neck. Try to move. You're going nowhere. But if I'm up here, go. He's all over the place. Take up the slack. Sit on his shoulder, right? It's already in. Here. So as you do the spear, right? Lock, strike as you walk. Down. Right, period. Do it with your left foot. Bring it in and arm bar. Everybody see it? Yes, they did. Yeah? Well, in a self defense situation, the better I am when my feet are panted firmly on the ground. Now, I'm not saying that a Soto Gatti is not a good throw, it's a wonderful throw. I use it all the time. But in a self defense situation, I need to move naturally, okay? Because you know what, in a moment of stress, I'm not going to remember, oh, yeah, yeah, you've got to pick the leg up. If your level of training is not there, it's not going to happen, okay? You're going to screw up your throw, and it may get reversed, because I've reversed a ton of Osoto Gatis on people, okay? But you know what, reversing, walking through, right? Come here for a second. I'm going to show you something. When you walk through, just hold your arm out. When you walk through something, and you're tight in your center, right, this guy tries to punch me with that hand. Go. I'm closer to him than he is to me. I see that shoulder, bam. I'm going to give him something to remember. Now, here's the interesting thing about the walkthrough. I'm not having to clip. I'm not having to lift my leg up. I'm basically walking him through and slamming him down. Okay? So using the same concept of the spear. Here. Straight on. Knee to the gut for control, post up. Okay, so how do we do that? Friend, everybody? Thank you. He punches, I come under. Notice what I did. I allowed that punch to come through. It's lost mo most of its momentum right there. I create this motion. My palm is toward me. Look. Now, in order for him to really do something with that arm, this, the, if it doesn't hurt, <coughs> he's going to punch me big time. Now, watch what happens. There's a phenomenon called the cross extensor reflex response. If I put this man in a lock on his left side or his right side, the opposite side will weaken. Try to punch. So what happened to his arm? Try to punch.
Let's say he does punch me. Okay, he hits me once and I break his elbow. What side of that would you want to be on? You know, if you get into a fight, you're gonna get hit. Okay, it's delusional to think that you're gonna walk on water and prevent every single attack. Because you know what, Mr. Murphy comes to visit all the time. When you least expect it, you'll slip on something, you'll hit something, somebody will come and push you, who knows? Who knows? So you want to minimize the amount of response time, and you really want to be in there tight. So here, when he punches, I come, I roll. I grab my forearm right here. You see it? Watch. Look, so now to throw him, very simple. I put my knee in control right here. And I post that so he can't reach over and grab my leg. Try. He can't reach it. And how I make the arm bar work is I lift up right here. Right here. I lift. See what I'm doing with my hand? It's like I'm turning the throttle and I'm pushing down on his shoulder. Does everybody see that? See it? Right off the spear. Same thing, right? Here we go. Bam, roll around. Here, look. Control of the shoulder. What happens here too? Watch. Watch my shoulder, my uh, shoot though, my knife hand. Look. I can turn that into this. I can turn it into this. I'm hitting pressure points all over the place. His neck is full of them. His chin is full of them. His jaw is full of them. You can't get that if you're down here. That's not going to work. Up high, here, around the elbow. So you come in here. Look, you're right under it. But see, 